everyone. Um, my name is Nisha. Uh, I work on the community team here with Elastic, um, and it's a pleasure to be joined here today with Sandeep. Um, Sandeep is here to discuss um, everything to do with acing the Elastic Certified Engineer exam. Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to pop them in the comment box as well. Um, and I'll let Sandeep uh, kick things off. Thanks. Sandeep, you're on mute, just to let you know. <laughs> you're, you're still on mute, Sandeep. Let me unmute you. Um, thank you for the nice introduction, Nisa. Uh, everyone, welcome to the session where I will cover some tips on how to ask the Elastic Certified Engineer Excel. I recently gave an Elastic Certified Engineer exam and cleared it, and so I'm here to share with you a few tips and tricks on how to ask the exam, how to do it. So what this course, uh, the session will not magically help you clear the exam. You still need to have considerable hands-on with the Elastic staff, but there are certain techniques which if you implement you have more chances to clear the exam. About me, I work at Northern Life Law as a senior principal engineer. My day-to-day -day job works, my day-to-day -day job involves uh, maintaining large ERK staff. Some of them are hosted in Azure, some in AWS, and some are cloud managed, some are self-managed. So I spend a lot of time re-architecting, uh, performance tuning, uh, re-indexing, uh, making the queries faster, optimizing this, and optimizing scores. So this is our agenda where we'll cover the topics like getting started with EC, the preparation strategy. So then what's the first thing to know after signing up for the exam? Is the first thing that you should know is to check the exam version. This is very, very important because there's a chance that the exam version can change. Usually, uh, it changes once in a year. So it's very important for you to make sure yourself aware of what is the exam version. The current version is 7.13. The next thing that you can do is to check the exam topics. So the, the exam questions are only going to come from the exam topics. So it is very important that you make yourself familiar with the exam topic and drop your strategy according to the topic. And lastly, clean the FAQ. The FAQ has a lot of important information and it could answer a lot of questions that you might have about the exam environment, about choosing accommodations, taking a break in the exam. So once the first step is done, what should be the next step? So, there is a webinar by Chris Raposa, and I recommend that you see the entire webinar of 55 minutes without skipping anything. That will give you all the information you need to know about the exam, including the exam environment, how to sign up for the exam, how to make sure you're familiar with the exam environment, which is in the Linux box. The next thing is, uh, Surbi Manager Law. So, Surbi is a support engineer at Elastic. And she did the Elastic Certification and wrote an excellent law that is almost like, it is like the one, one work that is all the resources. If you go to the blog and read it, you will get access to all the resources you need to prepare for the exam. And share my screen and show you all this. And once again, please read the agenda, because when you're practicing, it is very important that if you're passionate to Elastic, we tend to lose our focus. Like I was preparing for a topic and then I found some other interesting topic and then I went into that and spent a lot of time. So please, I won't get distracted, skip to the agenda. Uh, I like to just, I, oh, let me share my screen and show you something. So, uh, uh, Nisha, can you please share my screen? Ah, good. 
So this is the first semester. I uh, want to sign up for the exam, want to sign up for the exam. Then the thing that you need to do, you need to go to the topic. So if you go to the topic, it is like five main sections. So you need to make sure that you are well prepared from each of the sections. For example, if you prepare all this, but if you don't prepare anything else, just answer the question that is done, I'm very nice. So the exam will have like an equal distribution of questions from all the topics. So make sure you prepare this, you prepare searching data, you prepare all the main topics. And if you're not confident on subtopics, example like index aliases, I think it's okay. You may basically, you may not know how to answer one question. That's not, that's not a problem. And the next thing is to read the class. So if you read the FQ here, if you read the FQ here, you see which version of elastic search is the exam using and says like. So that helps you to know the version and it's very important because when you practice, make sure you use the same version and also the same documentation as well. The documentation changes from version to version, so stick to the version. If you are preparing for 7.13, make sure the ERK stack is 7.13 and the documentation is also 7.13. And then this, I am going to create an ILM policy. Uh, let me just do that first. So the next thing I like that is, uh, so this is the webinar that I was telling you about. So this is the webinar that I was telling you about risk proposal. So for example, if you see that, uh, so this has, an, this has a question on like, what is the exam environment? What kind of questions to expect? Uh, how many questions are like that? So for example, like there are 10, 10, most likely there are 10 questions. Okay, and each has equal margin. Now the most important thing is that some questions have multiple sub-questions. So if you answer the sub-question, you are eligible for partial marking. Like example, uh, so, so for example, like this has a full of five sub-questions here. This is five sub-questions. So if you answer the first two, you will still get marks for attempting if the first two are correct, you will still get marks. So there is no negative marking. So whatever the questions are there, if you are not confident of the full question, at least if you are confident of the partial thing, do attempt the partial question. So please read the entire webinar without skipping a bit. And then here, yeah, so then this is the blog about survey margin. So this has a question about the experience, how she prepare, and it also has resources to mock exams and practice. So the links to the mock exam from practice test and also be sharing at the end of the So this is like a one-stop one -stop page where you rent it before you give the exam. It's very important to read it. So then, so we'll continue with the slide now. So as I said, the five main questions. So how do you prepare, for example, how I prepare this? There were some topics are very well, very familiar with, example, re-indexing and everything. I used to work a lot on that. So I was very familiar with that. But there were many other topics, like example, cross-cluster application. So I have never used CCR in my production environment, so I wasn't familiar with that. So what I did was that I initially started with topics I was not aware of like example CCR, so I began to impact my confidence because I found that there is so much evidence. And still, plastic search is very much stuff. It is very hard to know everything. So what you can do is uh, you begin with something that you are really confident, familiar with. So that will boost your confidence. Then you tackle a topic that you are not confident with. Then again you come to a topic you are confident with. So like that it will help you to balance so that uh, maybe it will also it will also help you to cover all the five main sections. Then some of the tips are that uh, in the older exam you are required to modify the elastic search by method. You are required to create a cluster. 
Sőt, Szevendot Hötin Vajsen, a modifying the years to try my file of creating a question is no longer on the agenda. So plain don't spend time practicing. And there is very likely going to be a question on cross-cluster application. And the benefit of that is it is very easy. So it's mostly about like uh, there are two questions. So if you, if you see this reposition webinar, it will show you that there are two questions. And what you are required to do is, you are required to set up cross-cluster application. In order to set up that, when you are practicing in your home, in your local laptop, you have to enable CCR, you have to enable trial license. Only when you enable the trial license, is the option visible. So until you enable the trial license, the option is not visible. Now in the exam, the trial license may not be enabled. It is up to you to go and enable the trial license. Once you enable the trial license, you will be able to see the CCR option and then you can work on a question like you have to replicate an index from one cluster to another cluster. So it is pretty easy and within two to three minutes you can solve the question and most likely you will get full marks for the question if you know where. So do attempt this question, do practice this. It is a very easy way to gain full marks in a very short and I think there's likely going to be a question on search term. Guaranteeing this, okay? But I give an exam, my friend give an exam, and one more colleague give an exam, and all the three of us had question on search term. So this is really a challenging question. You really need to practice how to create a search template. And as I said, most of the questions have sub-questions. So one question will have like two or three or even five sub-questions. So the search template is not just to go and create a search template. It will have sub -tab. You have to finish and accomplish each of the sub uh, The next thing that is now that there is likely going to be a question on data stream. They are very important. And again, this is a question for you, which you can finish in like three or four minutes and get full marks. And it will involve creating an ILM policy like index life cycle management policy about transitioning the index from hot to warm to cold to drilling. So you have to use the Kibana web console to configure all that, which is pretty easy. So no spend time practicing it. And obviously there's going to be a question on source, aggregation, uh, metric, bucket, boolean queries. And there will mostly be a question on re -index, most likely like that. So a couple of us, almost almost all the people that I've spoken to have got the question on re -index. Sometimes it also comes as a sub-question. Okay, so now when you are in the exam environment, this is a tip to do when you are giving the question. Okay. So let's say that you have a question about uh, update my query where you have to update some documents based on the query or you are required to use a scripting, a panda script and update all the documents. Now, if you update the index and there is a mistake you made, what will you do? You cannot run back. So what I suggest is that if you are required to update index 1, you first create a clone of index. You can create a clone by issuing the index command. So issue the reindex command and create a clone of that. You can do that in the Kibana dev tool. So once you're creating the clone index, then you run the update by query in the clone index. So when you do that, if you make a mistake, it is the clone index that gets corrected. Your original index is still in there. And once the exam is over, you can delete the clone index, but it's not mandatory. I left a couple of clone indexes and I don't think I was negatively marked or given and I lost any mark for that. So you can let it be, it's not harmful. And you can use the Kibana DevTool to practice as much as you want. There is really no issue about you re-indexing and creating a couple of clone indexes is okay. So anytime I try anything on the exam like an update by query, I clone the index by using re-index, I'm dead it verify it, and then get it on the actual index. Okay, 
Okay. Now, update is about you are updating the document. You don't update index to update the document. You update index setting. You don't update an index, but you update a document. So I can go to the document API. You can go to the document API. I can find it. So how do you remember this? You do it when you're practicing and preparing. So this is much more convenient, much more intuitive than using the search bar. So that is one thing. And then this, so this, this is the set of practice exercises that I told you about at that time. Okay. So like exercises for the Elastic Certified Engineer exam like that, with modeling data, search and aggregation, storing data. So this deploy and operator cluster, this one is no longer on the exam. And then this one is like this one is what I have the April for you. So you can sign up and you get a seven day free trial for that. And then last place, this one. I haven't used that, but it looks like it seems good and you can use it for boosting your confidence. So then, to the next section that I would like to talk about is accommodation. If you have a disability or if you need an assistance, then you can email certification at elastic.org. You can tell them about your requirements. For like example, uh, example if you have a disability in hand or if you need frequent bathroom break and need extra time, you can ask for that. You can email them and they will take it on a case by case. To specify your requirement to them and then they will they will revert in about most likely the very fast to respond and they revert in about 24 hours just working there within working days they revert in about 24 hours and they will take it on the case by case and the second thing is um if you have a question like is this topic on the exam do i need to prepare for this topic or can i skip it so if you have any questions about any preparation accommodation anything for the exam you can email certification at plastic. They are usually very responsive and very amazing. And the last topic I have is how can I get a free certification? So this was something a lot of people asked me, that, am I eligible to get a free certification? So definitely. So, so there is no one way, there is not a tried and tested strategy to get a free certification. Uh, I would like to get a free certification, but I have been contributing to the community for the last couple of years. So one way is like, uh, one way is, for example, you speak at plastic search meetups, or you, you start an plastic user group, or you can invite other people to come and speak at meetups. When you join the plastic chat group, you ask questions, you talk about plastic search, uh, you learn about plastic search and then you wrote a LinkedIn blog, you wrote a Medium blog. Anyway, you just go on talking about plastic search to share your story with the community. Uh, you contribute in the discuss.elastic.org. You answer questions that people have asked. Or in Stack Overflow, you answer questions. So as you go on contributing to the community, the community will start to notice you. And then you may be lucky to get some swag, you may get a t-shirt, you may get some pretty cool swag, or you may get elastic certification voucher. And recently there's something known as an elastic contributor program. It's a wonderful program when every time you contribute, you go to the contributor portal and then you specify what you contribute. You are given some points and then based on points you are given some wonderful swag. So make use of that. The one thing that I'll tell you is be genuine. Do it on the hand of plastic. Like don't do it just because you want a free voucher, free spark. If you continue to contribute to the community, you will get much more than what you are expecting. Far, far more than what you are expecting. If you are genuine, then you are not going to be disappointed for sure. It takes time to be noticed. I began speaking from 2018, and the first time I got some recognition was in 2020. So it takes some time, you continue to do that, you definitely get recognized today. And I think, yes, so I think what is the advantage of certification is that uh, uh, you get a very cool map that you can display on your LinkedIn. And when you write answers in discuss.plastic, so discuss.plastic is the plastic community forum. 
Nan mano rajo ancesta et cam actec joan rastec certifat and ginger. Just certification, certification is very beneficial. It grows the general hand, working knowledge of the orchestra. You know how to deploy a great cluster. You are well versed with search and aggregation. You are well versed with troubleshooting a cluster. Like what to do when the start goes dead, what to do when the cluster goes dead, the start of unattained. Why is the cluster in yellow state? You understand all this term and then you get the certification really proof that you are valuable contributor to the plastic community. So certification definitely helps. So that's all for me. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy. Um, I know that we had one question that came in um, that was asking from Doug, would it be possible to put links in the video and LinkedIn blog in the video description after the session? So we can get them links from you, Sandy, and we can post them in the comments um, so everybody has access. Um, I'll just give a couple more seconds just in case anyone wants to pop in any comments or pop in any further questions um, before we wrap up. I think that's everything, um, Sandeep. Thank you so much um, for going through that with us. Um, it was a really good overview. Um, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining as well. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank